Hey everybody, today we're going to be building a Shen Drone Shrieker 130mm micro quad. It spins 3 inch props on 4S and it's a joy to fly. For this build you're going to need a Shrieker frame kit, DOIS 1306 motors, SN20A ESCs, a Dodo flight controller, a PDB with 8 6mm standoffs, an X4R S bus receiver, a small form factor VTX and small antenna, an HS1177 camera, and 3040 triblades. We're going to start off our build by finishing the carbon. Carbon finishing is basically rounding the carbon edges with a small diamond grip file or some sandpaper. Finishing your carbon accomplishes a few things. First of all, it prevents the sharp edges of freshly cut carbon from cutting your fingers or wires. Smoother edges also mean less chance of stress points or micro fractures causing a catastrophic failure, and it also prevents delamination at the edges of the frame where impacts are likely to occur. Lastly, it looks better and it feels better while handling the quad. Be sure to file your carbon in a bowl of soapy water. This keeps the carbon wet and it prevents the grindings of the carbon from entering the air. Ground up carbon that enters the air can enter your lungs and that's a harmful thing. It can also get into your skin and cause some nasty itching. So I recommend using gloves as well and wearing a face mask while grinding your carbon down. We're going to start the build by mounting our PDB to the frame. We're going to line it up so that the battery leads come off the left hand side of the frame and that the flight controller's USB port will come off the right side of the frame. Remember to use nylon M3 standoffs and screws for this step. That prevents any battery voltage from the PDB entering the frame and causing a short circuit. Nylon hardware is also much lighter than aluminum hardware and on a build this small every single gram will count. For this build, we're going to be using 6mm standoffs as that will allow us to squish everything inside this frame. Next, we're going to prepare our ESCs for soldering them to the motors. First, we'll remove the shrink wrap and then we will desolder each of the motor leads from the ESC. Take special care during this step to have a nice clean soldering iron that's been pre tinned Use a decent amount of heat so that you can quickly melt the solder on the ESC pads and remove each of the motor wires very quickly. This will prevent damage to the components on the ESC. The next step is performing the reach around. The reach around is basically wrapping the motor wires underneath the ESC, pulling them over top and lining up the ends with the motor wire tabs and then cutting off the wire ends at that length. In a build this small, the reach around is important because it allows the ESC to hug very closely to the motor and fit on the frame's arm. Next, strip off two or three millimeters at the end of each motor wire lead. Pre tin each of the motor wires before soldering them to the ESC. Next, solder each of the motor wires to the corresponding pad on the ESC. Be sure to get good solid solder joints here. When soldering your motor wires to the ESC, be sure to apply heat for only a very short amount of time so that you don't overheat components on the board, causing them to slide around as the solder beneath them melts. And this is the finished product of the reach around. Next slide some half inch or 5 8 inch heat shrink over your ESCs and ESC wires and get them ready to mount to your frame. Attach each motor to the frame using the included M2 screws. Be sure to use medium blue Loctite on each screw before applying it to the frame. In general, it's good to use Loctite on any metal to metal connection in your build.
While screwing on your motors, be sure not to over torque any of the screws. These M2 screws use a 1.5mm Allen key and it's very easy to strip either the screw or your tool. Another consideration to make is whether you're using unidirectional motors or motors that come paired in a clockwise and anti-clockwise pair. The DYS motors that I'm using for this build came in counter-rotating pairs. This means that the prop nuts for each motor are either counterclockwise or clockwise. The benefit of using this system is that you can ensure that your prop nuts actually tighten when the props spin up. To ensure that you have the correct motor placement, you'll be using the motors with the gray prop nuts on the front right and back left. Use the black prop nuts on the front left and back right motor arms. Now that you have your motors mounted, prepare your PDB for soldering. Here I'm using a flux pen and painting each of the board contacts with some flux and this will ensure that my solder flows well over each of these pads. The next step is to tin each of your solder pads on your PDB. After you're finished, clean up your PDB with an alcohol soaked rag. This will wipe away any spattered flux that got onto your PDB. Next, tin each of your ESC wires. Here, I have them already cut to the appropriate length for the PDB. Then solder your ESC wires onto the PDB. The final product should look something like this. Next, tin your battery lead connector and solder it to the PDB. Here I'm using a heat gun to shrink my heat shrink on my ESCs. Next, solder on some power leads for your VTX and flight controller. When performing this step, make sure that your components are able to take your battery's voltage. In the case of this build, my build is using 4S power, that's 16.8 volts at full charge. The flight controller I'm using is able to take up to 6S inputs or 24 volts, so this should be okay and my VTX can also take up to 4S inputs. In a build this small, there's not too much room to work with. Here I have de-pinned each of my ESC leads so that I can solder them directly to the flight controller. Here I'm tinning each of the flight controller output solder pads. Next, solder each of the ESC wires to the appropriate pads on your flight controller. Perform this step with your flight controller mounted upside down into the side of your board. It helps to configure the board as I have here so that all your wires can be under the flight controller and out of the way of any breaking props that may occur during flight. This will prevent your wires from being cut. Then when you're finished, you can simply flip over your flight controller and all of your ESC wires will be out of the way. Here I'm soldering the power wires directly onto my flight controller. If you're using a flight controller like the Dodo, you can easily run direct battery voltage into it. However, if you're using a NAS or other flight controller which requires 5 volt input, you're going to need a 5 volt regulator. If you care about not burning the hell out of your fingers, this is not a great way to solder. Next, use some small M3 nylon nuts and fasten down your flight controller. <laughs> 
Here I have my X4R SB receiver. You can see that I've removed all of the pins and the cardboard housing that it came in. This slims down the receiver and lets it fit into the build much easier. Here I'm soldering the telemetry wire which will connect to the flight controller and allow my Tyrannus to receive telemetry data from the flight controller. This is sort of a weird way of doing it, but it works and it's easy to solder to the outside of the micro JSD connector port. Next you can tin each of the SBUS signal, 5 volt rail, and ground wires on your receiver to make them easier to solder to. Next cut the leads off of a small servo cable and solder each of the appropriate wires to its corresponding port on your receiver, like so. Next prepare a half inch piece of heat shrink with a small hole cut in it to expose your bind button and receiver LEDs. Lay out your quad like this. Put a small zip tie directly under the flight controller where it's not trapping any of the ESC wires below. Then put a small piece of foam on top of the side of your flight controller and stack your receiver on top of that. You might notice that this receiver does not have heat shrink on it as this was done earlier in the build while I was still deciding how to do things. The main concept is the same though. Next, pre-tin each of the wires coming off of your receiver. Go ahead and solder your telemetry cable to the appropriate pad on your flight controller. Then solder the S-Bus wire as well as the 5 volt and ground cables onto your flight controller. For this step, it really helps to have a small pair of needle nose pliers or forceps to enable you to manipulate the wires and hold them just in the right place, as this is a tight part of the build. Next, mount your standoffs onto the frame using Loctite. Here I'm using aluminum screws instead of the supplied steel screws. This will save me a few grams in the final build. Next we're going to prepare the top plate and the video transmitter. Here I have two small rubber grommets. One of them I cut in half as you can see here. We're going to insert the VTX into the top plate, put on the rubber grommet and then screw on the antenna. This will keep everything firmly in place. Wire up your video transmitter appropriately to your camera and then place your camera inside the frame. I mounted my video camera on top of a few pieces of spongy foam that came with some Cobra motors. This keeps the camera mounted firmly inside the frame but also allows me to readily adjust my camera angle at will. Before I screwed on the top plate, I put a small rubber grommet over the backside M3 screw. This was to slightly raise up the top plate. In this build, the VTX was slightly too tall for the 35mm standoffs. The cords coming out of the bottom of the VTX in this build were getting squished slightly and I was worried about breaking something. The last step is to make an antenna protector. Here I've used three zip ties in combination with heat shrink to make a Y antenna. This will give me good diversity reception. So here you go. Here's the completed build.
This copter weighs 263 grams with an 864S pulse battery. For those of you who are concerned about getting under the FAA's 250 gram weight limit for UAS registration, 3S is certainly an option. Also, new 4S packs are coming out in the short future in the 600 milliamp size, and they should easily get this build under 250 grams. So, thanks everybody for watching this video. If you'd like to pick up a shrieker or gear to outfit your shrieker with, check out the links below. Thanks. Bye-bye.